Despite their violent history as bull killers, today's English bulldogs are mellow and gentle companions. Their unique looks, as well as their affectionate, humorous nature, has made them popular amongst dog lovers throughout the world. And yet, they are not a good match for every person and every household. And in today's video, we're going to talk about five main reasons why you should not consider getting an English bulldog. Welcome back to the Fenrir English Bulldog Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible English Bulldog, then how to become a high-level canine leader that can raise perfect English Bulldog companions. So if you're a lifelong English Bulldog lover or you're just thinking about getting your first English Bulldog puppy, then I promise you there's something here on this channel for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future English Bulldog video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll get started with the first important reason why you should not be getting an English Bulldog. And that is that English Bulldogs really don't do well living outside. The middle-sized, very muscular and compact English Bulldog makes for a decent watchdog with at least some guarding abilities. However, this does not mean that they can be kept outside in a kennel, yard or garden. By forcing them to stay outside, you would actually endanger your English Bulldog's lives because they are a brassiophallic breed. Just like many Mastiffs and Pugs, Bulldogs have unnaturally short snouts, a feature that does not allow them to pant sufficiently for cooling down the bulk of their bodies. This anatomical deficiency can easily cause overheating, which in turn can kill the dog when left outside on hot days. In addition to that, bulldogs are highly susceptible to sunburns, especially around the nose and eyes. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, probably an English bulldog would be okay outside in cooler weather, but again, no. Due to their anatomy, the cold is as much their enemy as the heat can be. When it comes to cool and cold temperatures, temperatures, the English Bulldog suffers from a quick loss of body heat. As well, warming back up is much more difficult for Bulldogs than many other dog breeds because they cannot move around as fast. And this leads us straight into discussing the English Bulldog's health in general at number four. Whilst they make marvellous pets, English Bulldogs are so prone to health issues that you might want to reconsider getting one. The long list of breeds health issues include the most prevalent problem, and that is that brassiophallic obstructive airway syndrome that we kind of alluded to back in that first point. This syndrome is related to their above mentioned intolerance to heat and means that Bulldogs often have trouble breathing due to their short muzzles. This in turn often causes them to emit loud snoring, snorting, heavy breathing and panting noises. And the list of potential health problems in this breed continues long past brassiophallic difficulties with ailments like chronic eye conditions as well as various bone and joint diseases such as hip dysplasia and arthritis. Also, the English Bulldog is unusually prone to joint and ligament injuries. This is due to the abnormal growth of cartilage, a structural defect inherent in the breed. Various allergies, thyroid and heart problems as well as cancer can also befall the English Bulldog. So ask yourself if you really want to deal with all of these potential problems. With this breed, you are guaranteed to see a lot of your vet and to spend lots of money on vet bills. So unless you are willing to deal with a potentially very sick dog that could be suffering from chronic pain, you should not be considering getting an English Bulldog. Which takes us on to reason number three, and that is that you want an active canine companion. Even though English Bulldogs do love to play with their humans and other dogs, they are a low energy breed. Not only do they require minimal exercise each day, but working them out too much is again dangerous for their health. So if you are a very active person yourself and you want a dog to come with you on extended walks, the Bulldog really isn't a very good choice. The same applies to things like over overnight camping trips. Plummeting temperatures can quickly become unsafe for your bulldog. Even trips to the park, the beach or the lakefront are not without risk. Your dog could suffer from sunburn or heat stroke or they could drown because they have a, a bulldogs are negatively buoyant which means they sink when put into water. So unless you are willing to limit your outings to around 15 minutes per walk, an English bulldog really isn't a good breed to go for. 
And our reason at number two is that English Bulldogs are stubborn. English Bulldogs are strongly independent thinkers. In other words, they do have a stubborn streak that can be quite difficult to work around, especially when it comes to training. That does not mean there's a lack of intelligence or that they're hearing impaired or anything like that. It's more of a case of selective hearing. Bulldogs will have no trouble at all remembering the sound of their food bowl being filled. Also, they will fairly quickly learn to respond to vocal cues like, let's go for a walk. However, when it comes to commands that do not promise instant rewards for them, they might shamelessly ignore you. This, of course, can be very frustrating when you are trying to instill obedience and manners into your puppy as part of the training process. Even though positive reinforcement usually will give you some decent results, this kind of behavior makes the breed challenging to train for an average or beginner dog owner. Therefore, if you want a very trainable dog who can perform many different commands and tricks, then you should not be considering an English Bulldog. Which takes us to our reason in the number one spot, and that is that English Bulldogs need you around. They are very affectionate canine companions and enjoy nothing more than spending as much time with their owners as possible. These lovable dogs do not just prefer you being around, they absolutely require your company to stay well-rounded and content. English Bulldogs are natural companion dogs who thrive in the company of their humans. If you lead a lifestyle where maybe they're left by themselves all day, English Bulldogs might develop separation anxiety and can quickly start to do things like chewing up uh, your carpet or your sofa or your remote controls. In addition, severe separation anxiety can aggravate any health concerns that they already suffer from. So I do think that for this reason, if you cannot be at home with your dog for the best part of the day, then you should not be considering getting an English Bulldog. So even though the English Bulldog is an amazing breed, these sensitive companions are not suited for any person or lifestyle. If any of those five reasons why you should not get an English Bulldog discourages you from bringing one home at this point in your life, but you are still interested in the breed, consider this. Maybe all it takes is a slight change of your perspective or of your schedule. For example, ensuring that at least one family member is home with your dog during most of the day could be enough to turn them from a very bad choice to the perfect fit for you and your lifestyle so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you hit that thumbs up button and if you think there's anything we forgot get involved and comment that down in the comment section below don't forget if you are new here to hit that subscribe button we've got two dedicated english bulldog videos coming to this channel every single week so i can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the femrear english bulldog show